بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and blessings upon his beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam The reminder of today is our journey to the life here after. And before we jump to the into life here after, we need to talk first about this life. The purpose that we are here. What else Allah, what else Allah created us? What is the wisdom behind it? The Allah created us subhanahu wa ta'ala for work. The Allah created us subhanahu wa ta'ala for earning. The Allah created us, created us for enjoyment. The Allah created us, created us, created us for a joke. The reality is none of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in this world to worship Him alone. So that's why Allah Ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn or my kind. I did not create jinn nor mankind except to worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقُ I don't want them to work. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I don't want them to feed me. Then who is the provider? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is the one who feed us? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe to other to the to reasons. You work, you earn, you work hard. Yes, these all reasons. But the reality is that all the reasons are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Almighty. And we need that to be in our hearts. And we need to believe that. Family, you can easily say, you can easily claim you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can easily say you believe that Allah is my provider. You can claim that. I can claim that. But is it in my heart? If that's in my heart, then you can see that from my action. I trust in him. I don't have afraid of my boss. I don't care whether he's around or not. I come on time to my work. I do what I do normally, whether he's looking at me or he's not looking at me. That if, if that's the way you live, then you don't need CCTVs. That's why this what I, I will tell you one of the beautiful stories I've heard from brands from Leicester when I when I was giving a lecture in their masjid, Masjid Fuqan. One of the managers, who's an Englishman, came with his worker to the masjid. And he's sitting with Sheikh Abdul Basit, the lecturer of the masjid. And he said, the reason I'm here is what I have seen from this man. And this man... Even he has no good English. He does not speak proper English. But he is a man of principles. He is a man who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this man, he has been working for me for over a year. He said, I see him always smiling. Always happy. Always clean. Always smells nice. He puts his perfume when he comes to work. He said, all the other stuff, when I am on top of their head, they run around. As soon as I turn away, they sit down. But this man, he said he never cares 
whether I am around him or not. He does his job. He said he comes to me on the time of the prayer and he asks permission. I want to have 10 minutes break. What for? For my prayer. I'm a Muslim. I need to pray. He said, because of what I have seen from him, he said, I said, I will stand and go. He said, it never happened. One day that I said no to him. I asked him. I said, you earn ten times less of what I earn. I see you always happy. I see you different than the other staff. I see you that there's a camera rather than my camera that you take care of. I want to know. Why are you different than the other staff? He said, I've been working in this field for over 30 years. I'm the manager of this company for over 15 years. He said, I've never come across a person like you. He said, because I'm a Muslim. I said, I've seen some other Muslims like you. But they never used to pray. They never used to pray. <coughs> they never used to come on time. You always see them laid back. When they see me around, they work hard. As soon as I turn, they do whatever they want to do. Sit down, having a tea, enjoying themselves. I said, you are different. Only because he said everybody can say he said you with his little English he said you are saying you are Christian <coughs> he said yes he said do you go to church every Sunday he said no he said that means there's good Christian there's bad Christian he said yes Similarly, we have good Muslims and we have bad Muslims. He said, I count, I count myself, my Allah protect me as a good Muslim. I try to practice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me. I, I like to practice my principle. That's why I said, I don't care whether you are around. Or you are not whether you're looking at me or you're looking or you, or you are not looking at me and then he said I need literature <clears throat> book about your Dean he got it for him from the masjid and then he's seen the address of the masjid he said, can I come with you to the masjid? He said, yes, why not? And then they brought him to Sheikh Abdul Basit. And then they asked him the question that he wants to ask. He clarified things that he wants to clarify. And after two weeks, he became a Muslim. That's why what we always say, starting from myself, and secondly, to you, that we should be messengers for this deen. Our youth, they should be messengers for this deen. Our elderly, they should be messengers for this deen. By acting upon their deen. By practicing their deen. By being <laughs> proud of what they are. By not hiding their beliefs and their deen. That's why if you, especially our youngest, if they Google 
Muslim Bilal, this brother and the way he became a Muslim, and the incidents he mentions when he was in school from another Muslim guy called Waqas. He said, that man, that boy, he said he spoke to the teacher, that he wants to pray, and the teacher okay, told him, when the time comes, just raise your hand, and I will let you go. He said, that boy, he raised his hand in the class, and the teacher said, okay, Waqas, you can go. He said, this young Jamaican man, who's a rude boy, he said, he raised his hand as well. Hmm. He said, where do you want to go? He said, no, I want to go. You let Waqas go. Why not me? He said, Waqas, he asked me, what does he want to do? But you did not ask. He said, no, 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 no. There's no discrimination. You should not discriminate against me. Waqas asked for permission, you let him go. You have to let him go, let me go as well. And he said no. And he just got up and went. Went after Waqas. Waqas doesn't know that this man is following him. This boy, he doesn't know that his boy is following him. He said, Waqas went into the shower side you know in the schools that you have a shower side and you have a toilet side I said eh? what does you guys want to do he said he went he went into the shower place and he started pulling his uh, sleeves and, and he said I said uh oh what's happening here I waited until he started doing his wudu. And then I tapped him from the back and he jumped. Hey, what are you doing? Do you know what he said? And this is what, this is what I want our youth to understand. He said, I'm doing some of my tradition things. He did not say this is my religion. He did not say this is my deen. He did not say that I want to pray. He did not say I'm doing my wudu, which is a approach that I have, I have to do before I go for my prayer. Of course, he's not proud of his, about his identity. If you're not proud of your identity, if you don't have self-esteem, if you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proper way with knowledge, with understanding then you become like that and then he said Brother Bilal is saying that then he said I went through the streets of um, uh, Brixton and uh, I got into all this trouble and all this he said if he told me on that day it was possible that he will save me all this hassle that I've gone through and all this ignorance and I might got shot I might get shot for that time I might die in that situation and who was responsible for that? me and that brother and all of us if we did not convey this message We're all responsible. We all have neighbors. We all have people around us. We all work. We have colleagues. But we never give them a little message. I'll give you one more. You all know that Mr. Blair's sister-in-law become a Muslim yes you all aware of that yeah. and she's active who gave her dawah yeah. huh yeah. no 
taxi driver who is Somali. And she said, even, I don't know whether he's aware of that. Just imagine, when you do this da'wah, you might not know how far it might reach. And that's nothing to do with you anyway. You don't have to know, because you are doing it for Allah's sake. She said, my car broken down. She's a middle class girl, driving a nice car. She goes to work by car, she comes back, and then her car broken down. Then she said, I needed a car for four days. I said, I, look, I, I called my local mini car shop. I told them and uh, I need uh, somebody to take me work and bring me back for four days with a nice car, not grumpy one. And then they sent this Somali brother, he said, well, I was driving a fairly new car, and then they sent him. He took her the first day. She said, when I was getting off, she said, he gave me a little leaflet. Leaflet. She said, I left. And I told him, I took his mobile number, and she said, rather than like every day new one, you never know how it's going to be, or how this car is going to be. I'm happy with this car, I'm happy with this man with his manners, and I want uh, you to pick me up after five o'clock. I will call you when my time gets closer. And I want you to come for me for four days. What happened? The second day, he gave her the same leaflet. He gave her another one. Another leaflet. I went to my office, said I start reading. The third day, he gave her another leaflet. Then she said, Allah wa ta'ala guide me through these three leaflets from that Somali mini cab brother. Allah opened my heart. I got, I got more literature. And I, I took my shahada. Then we need all of us, regardless of your background, regardless of what kind of a job do you have, regardless of whatever you do, you have to have that aim in your heart. Giving that. In school, carry some leaflets in your back. In college, carry some leaflets in your back. If you work in an office, keep some leaflets on your table. Especially those interesting ones. Some interesting titles. Like um, about Islam and woman. About Islam and Christianity. The dialogue. And also knowledge. You want to, if you want to establish the reason that Allah Taala created us in this world, you have to do something of your part. And the reason Allah created to worship Him alone, and think the blessings and the favors that Allah Taala Allah gave you. Always think about how Allah Taala created you. Think about when you were in your, in your, in your mother's womb. When you were alaqa, a cloth, and you were on the wall of your mother's womb. Who looked after you in that position, in the middle of the three darkness? That's what creates you. In your mother's womb. 
خلقا من بعد خلق في ظلمات ثلاث in the middle of the three darkness who looked after you in that position when you were a piece of meat in your mother's womb who looked after you in there with your mother's movement with your mother running around with your mother doing the home the housework with your mother doing sometimes another jobs outside and you are protected there who looked after you in that position in that position doesn't he deserve to worship him and who created inside that piece of meat all these bones and then who covered up those bones with meat and who covered that with skin and I thought I created you in a different form, different way. All dif different than the, all the states that you've gone through. Different than the alak and the cloth, different than the piece of flesh, different than, than what Allah put the bones on you. Then I thought I created you. And then I thought I fed you in that position through your belly button. Whatever your mother eats, you get a portion. How? Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala. You come up from your mother's womb. And I thought I'd make the way easier for you. With your big head. How do you come up through that little space? If I thought I'd not make it easier. How come? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed that position that you were eating from. So the job of that wire is finished. And then who gave your mother the milk as soon as you were born? Why did she not have a milk before that? And why we not born with full teeth? Because there's no need for you to have a teeth in that position. Think about it. And who taught you how to stop your mother's breast? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who taught you. If the whole world get together to teach you how to suck, they will not be able to teach you. And that's what happened with Isa alayhi salam, with Jesus. That's what happened with him. Sorry, Moses, not Jesus. Moses, what Pharaoh used to do with the people of Bani Israel, the children of Israel, what did he used to do with them? I went from the youngest days, from the back, who are like an elderly sitting, <laughs> leaning on the, on the wall. When they, our, young, our youth of today, they cannot sit properly. They cannot sit, look, the, 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 the old man sitting properly. They have to look for a wall where they can lean on. Why is that? You guys, you are more active than our elderly, and you still learn uh, what what Pharaoh used to do. Tell me, youngsters, what did he used to do with the children of Bani Israel? He used to kill the sons, not the daughters, because he needs women. He's a womanizer. He used to kill the boys. Children of Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved. Anyway, I don't want to take long of that. You can you can read inshallah of uh, the seal of the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved. When the Fir'aun 
when his mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told her to throw that son in the river, just to imagine, and ask the mothers how hard it is after you go through all that nine months bringing us in your, in, in, in your womb and giving the birth. And the youngsters, they did not see that. I hope they grow up and then, then they will appreciate what their mother gone through. And that's why the mother has more right than the old man. Right? How many times? Three, Three times. <coughs> then the old man comes after that because of that. Because of what she's gone through. That's why a man carried his mother on, on, his, soul, on, on, on his shoulders on the hajj. And you can imagine how hard it is. You carry yourself in the hajj is hard. What about carrying your mom on your shoulders? And then he came to Abdullah ibn Umar. And another, another narrative, he came to Abu Huraira. And then he said, I carry my mother on my shoulder. On the hajj. Arafah, Mina, Muzdalifah, everywhere. Tawaf, Sa'i. It means Safa and Marwa. Everything. And I was carrying my mom. Have I fulfilled her rights? He said, what? Not even one contraction. Not even one contraction and one kick that you gave her when, you, when she was carrying you in your stomach, in her stomach, in her womb. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me go back to Moses. <coughs> Allah ta'ala forbid him from sucking any other woman's breast. Whatever they try, no way. And the child is crying. And the wife of Fir'aun, she wants to keep this child. Allah Ta'ala put love in her heart for that baby. She said, leave him, we, we, we want to keep him. We want to bring him up as a, our, our son. Newborn baby. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then his mother sent his sister to speak to these people. And then she told them, Shall I tell you a family who's going to look after you for this son? Then brought back. Because as soon as they brought back Moses to his mother, he starts sucking her straight away. And then they, subhanallah, this is Allah's wisdom. And it happens how Allah wants. But it needs from us just to trust Him. To trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him and to thank Him for all what He did for us. <coughs> and amazingly, after all that, and we were youngsters, we passed that. Youth, we passed that. We become a big man. Some of us pass that. We become an old man with some grey hair. And we still disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we use his bounties to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should go and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somewhere else. Not on his earth. Not on his kingdom. Not the eyes that he gave it to you. Not the ears that he gave it to you. Not the legs that he gave it to you. Then we should be grateful to Allah. We should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should thank him. And, we, and the thank you, my brothers, is not only with the tongue. You can say whole day, alhamdulillah. But is that enough? No. That's not enough. You have to say also, Alhamdulillah, with your action. By worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By fulfilling your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing your job. And the real job that Allah gave you in this world. 
if we did not do that, if we did not fulfill that, what is next? And that's what we're going to talk about. What is next? The next is the death. Are we all going to die? Have you ever heard a country that is stopped the death? I'll be the first person to go and apply asylum in that country. <laughs> yes, I'll be the first. The country who says you're going to live forever. Enjoy. But there is no. The hospitals. What is what's the, what's the purpose of the hospitals? Huh? What's the purpose of the hospital, young man? Why do people build hospitals? Huh? Don't you know? When you get sick, where do you, where do you go? Hospital, yes. For what? To get sick more? <laughs> to get better, yes. That's me. That's the reason the hospital has been built from, isn't it? But where's the people? Where do they die the most? In the houses? No, in hospitals. Because we're all going to die. There's no doubt about that. But what have we prepared? Is it death, and that's it? Nothing after that. Like the Nabil West used to say, Qubulun tabla wa butulun tadfa. Woman giving a birth to babies and graveyards with its swallows, the people, the dead people. And that's it. Nothing after that. Is that true? Huh? Nah, it's not true. You're absolutely right. Is not true. It's one of transaction period. Like the way you were in your mother's womb, different lifestyle, different way. You came out to this world, different lifestyle, different things, different way. After you die, it's a different way, and different lifestyle will start. And that's what we're going to talk about. We all believe that we are going to, we all going to die. Are we all agree? All of us. No one has guarantee. Huh? Has a guarantee to, die. to die. Okay. We all agree on that. Ijma, mashallah. Also, do we all agree that there is a life here after? Okay, if we all agree on that as well, what have we prepared? Because our youth, our youngest days, they're in school. They work hard. They pass their GCSEs. Are they aiming for GCSEs? That's it. No. They're going for air levels. Is that all? No, they go to university. What is after university? Work. Yes. You're looking for a job. You're looking for a young lady, for a wife. You need to settle. That's what you aim for. That's in this life. But what about here after? What is my aim? What am I aiming for? We're all going to die. And we all agree that the death is very hard. It's not easy. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul will test the death. فَلَوْ لَا 
إذا بلغت الحلقوم when the soul reaches your neck what happens why Allah Ta'ala mentioned the neck the elderly might know that when you die your soul comes out from your legs bit by bit you find your top part is still alive your head is still alive you can answer you can talk you can say la ilaha illallah and you already your legs are dead and they already freezing as soon as the soul comes out of your body who created the soul no no breathing <laughs> Who created the soul? Huh? America? Falawla in kutum ghayra madinin. If you are denying the death, if you don't believe in death, tarji'unaha in kutum sadiqin. Bring it back. Bring the soul back into the body. What happened? Why don't we see the soul? You, we hear. Oh, this person died. And as soon as the person dies, he loses free KD. Amazing. I am 104. I'm a bit lad, aren't I? <laughs> I am 104 KD. As soon as my soul goes out of my body, you'll find me like 99, 100. What happened? And we don't see anything coming out. With all this technology and the iPhones and the iPods and iDs and iDAC, why don't we take any pictures? With Google Earth, Google Die, Google Deck, with all of that. Why did not keep some pictures? Why they couldn't take some pictures when the soul is coming out of the body? وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ Open it of Allah. They will ask you about the soul. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي The soul will belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the knowledge that you've been given is very little. All this, we are amazed. It's nothing. I come to Allah's knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And the one the soul leaving the body is the hardest time. We need all to think about it. If that happens to me today, at this moment, and my soul goes out of my body, what is going to happen to me? How am I going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What have I prepared for my life hereafter? We all aware that the death is not easy. The death is not easy. As Allah Ta'ala said, Kalla ida balagati taraqi wa qila man raq When the soul reaches the neck you always hear neck, neck, neck. Waqila man raq. And they say, where are the people who can make ruqya? 
Where's the doctors? Where's the nurses? What happened? Do something about it. وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ You all looking at your father or your brother or your mother or your sister and you cannot do anything for them. Handcuffed. You're just looking at them. Just think about it. That might be today. That, that, that might be me. That might be you. Think about it. Do not let it go just like that. And you're all looking handcuffed. You cannot do anything. Allah is saying, We are closer to you, to you than them. We are close to that person who is dying than you. But you cannot see them. And the hadith of Bukhari, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his deathbed, and he found the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very hard and painful situation. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inna katu'a kuwa'kan shadeedan. O Prophet of Allah, you are in a very severe pain. And that was the hardest time that this Ummah has. This Ummah had. That's the hardest time ever. The death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he said, Alayhi Wasallam, Inni u'aku kama yu'aku rajulani minkum. I've gone through the pain of two of your men. Then I'm going to say, does that, does that mean that you get the double of the reward? He said, that's that. Then our Prophet gone through that hardship of the death. And Aisha, also it's in Bukhari, she was wetting a towel and then he was putting on the head of the Prophet Sallam. And then he used to say, Alayhi Sallam, Ah, Inna al mawti la sakarat. The death <coughs> has a hardship. The tube of the death is not easy. And Imam al Qurtubi said in his book, Kitab, he talked about the death. At Tadkirah, the title of the book, At Tadkirah fi Ahwal al Mawta wa Umur al Akhirah, by Imam al Qurtubi. And then he mentioned, he said, the death is more painful than a hundred swords, no, no, than a thousand swords falls on your body in one go. Just think about it. A thousand swords goes on your body in one go. It is more painful than that. And we all gonna go through that. Then what is gonna happen? And we all are aware that we are all going to die. What have we prepared for that journey? That's why one of the Poets, the Arab poets, he said in his poem, he said, فَارَقْتُ مَوْضِعَ مَرْقَدِي يَوْمًا فَفَارَقَنِي السُّكُونَ 
القبر أول ليلة بالله قل لي ما يكون. He said I left in this world my normal bed into another place like my situation today. I came from London. I came from my house, from my normal bed, and I'm going to sleep in another place, in another bed, in another in another brother's house. And then he said, فَفَارَقَنِ sukun." I could not sleep. I could not rest. I could not enjoy my sleep. And then he said, if that's the situation in this world, when you leave your normal place into another place, you lose your rest, you lose your confidence, you lose your sleep. He said, what, what's going to happen? Al-Qabru awwalu laylatin. The first night of my grave. By Allah, tell me what my situation is going to be. And I want all of us to think about it. Think that you are the person who died. Think about yourself getting washed by three, four, five men who are nothing to do with you. Think about that you lost your privacy. Before you used to say, this is mine. No, don't touch it, don't touch it there. On that day, you cannot say anything. They're going to watch you however they want. They're going to turn you around, right, left, center. You cannot say anything. Think about it. And then they wrap you in a white piece of clothes. <laughs> what happened to your designer clothes? What happened to your suits? What happened to your, all your nice clothes that you used to wear in this world? What happened to your thobes, to your chemises, to your shirts, to your jackets, to your tops, to your... What happened to it? They're all gone. they all history now. Why a piece of clothes are you going to take from this world? And then what happens next? They will be carried. They will bring you to the masjid. Sallu alayya salatan la ruku' alaha. They will pray on me as salah. There is no ruku', there is no sujood. Wala sujood Allah Allah yarhamuni. Ma Allah ta'ala be merciful to me. Just think about it. That you are in front of everybody. And they are saying Allahu Akbar. Think about it. It's not far. Al mawtu yati baghtatan. Wal qabr sunduq al amal. The death comes sudden. You might not have introductions. You might not even be able to say anything. One brother once was saying, there was a. I was crossing the road, then a car come very close to me. And then he said, oh, you know the word, the nice word, we, our youth always said it. F this. And then he said, as soon as I passed the road, and Allah saved me, then he said, I, I, then I thought about it. And he said, subhanallah. I said, just think, if that was my last word in this world, just think about it. Because your last word in this world counts. That's what Abraham Salam said in the authentic hadith. Man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah. Man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illallah. Man, the one of his last words in this world. Is la ilaha illallah. He's going into paradise. <coughs> Some of our youngsters they say. What? I can say it. Simple. La ilaha illallah. Easy. But one of the doctors said. He said. 
there's about 60 to seven, seven, 600, 700, or 60 to 70 people died in my hospital, in, in my in, uh, department. And then he said, think about it. And this is not in the UK. It's in a Muslim country. And the people are all Muslims. And how many of them said, La ilaha illallah? Just give it a guess. How many do you think, brother? How many of them said, La ilaha illallah? Five? Another number? One. He's right. He's right, wallahi. He said only one person. And he said, I have tried with all of them. I have tried with all of them to say La ilaha illallah. It's not coincidence. It's not by chance. It's what you used to do in this world. If you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you follow Allah's words and regulations, if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the chance to say La ilaha illallah. If no, you will say something else. If you are those people who always sits in the cafes and who always talks about the other tribes, at the end of the day you will say, oh, this tribe is bad. No, that tribe is better. This tribe is bad. That tribe is better. And this happened. Because everyone, every person, whatever you always, your, ta your tongue on it, that way you're going to end it up. Just think about it. If you always your tongue with the members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how you end it up. That's how you're going to end. If you always, with the dhikr of Allah, with la ilaha illallah, with subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't let you down. But if you are busy with something else, Ibn Qayyim in his book of Da'wah, da da he mentioned about over 70 incidents. The people who are busy with others other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Somebody busy with singing. And then he said, when the death came to him, the people they're saying, say, la ilaha illallah. And he's saying, tin, tina, tin, tina. He's still singing. Yes, he's still singing. Somebody who's, who used to work in buying and selling in uh, lands and houses and uh, estate agents. The people are saying, say, la ilaha illallah. And he's saying, this, this piece of land is nice. <laughs> Buy it. This piece of land is beautiful. Buy it. And then he died. And you're saying, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. He cannot say it. Because it's not coincident, brothers. It's what you used to act upon. It's what you used to do. What, you, what, what your mind was busy with, you're going to die with it. If you're a politician, you will end up saying, Oh, this... This group, oh that group, no this group, that group are the right one. No, this group are the best to, to, to take over the, the rule of the country and you will end up like that. Whatever your mind is occupied, you will end up with. Our youth, some of them who are into football, they're going to say, oh, Messi is the best player. No, 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 Ronaldo is the best in the world. No, 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 Ronaldinho, no, 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 no. You have to say, la ilaha illallah. No, he's busy with something else. He's busy with Man U, with Man City, with... Uh,